The intention of this movie is to make sure that you don't miss out on uh, at least seeing the the XFROG plant images that ship with uh, Vectorworks Landmark 2008. Now, as you if you've watched the movie on uh, controlling 3D plant graphics with the plant objects, uh, you'll note that I made mention of this these particular libraries as well. These ones uh, are available in the same location as the other libraries. Let's navigate there uh, and add some of them as, a, as favorite files. We can do this by the usual manner, choose add new favorite files and I'll just go out a little bit so you can see. So in the Vectorworks 2008 folder we're looking into libraries and then you'll see plants and we've been here before for the plant objects but this time we're looking at plant images. Now, there's four categories here, artistic, grayscale, photorealistic, and silhouettes, black and white. Now, the grayscale, photorealistic, and silhouettes are basically the same trees, just presented in a different way. Whereas the artistic ones are artistic representations of trees that um, really are not really um, species specific and they are available in front view and top view. Now you could actually use these to uh, as a graphic to create a plant object from and attach species information if you wanted to. Nothing to stop you doing that. And you'll see that in the artistic libraries there's um, uh, both 2D, artistic color wash 2D, and these are the ones that we'll be using here, but there are also image props, the ones with IP, so you could actually use these uh, in, in a 3D model as well if you have render works. So the IP ones will require render works, the 2D ones you can use in any drawing. So just to give you an idea of what they're like, you'll see here, let's go with um, maybe the uh, deciduous front and top and what have we got down here? Um, maybe these shrubs front and top. So that's in the uh, the artistic library. Then in the grayscale library uh, you'll see that there's the, the uh, Australian ones are here also in front and top. So, But there are other ones here that are worth having a look at. So let's add these two and I'm just holding down the Apple key or on a PC that would be the uh, control key to be able to select randomly from these lists to add them all at once and if we go to photorealistic let's choose those two and finally go down to silhouettes and again we'll choose those two just as a comparison. Let's go ahead and click open and then all of those eight or ten libraries that I chose there are going to be added. You can see they're now available here in the uh, resource browser as favorite files. Let's just work through them uh, starting with the artistic color wash 2D front and you'll get immediately get an idea of the kinds of things that that are in here. You can see given that these are deciduous we're probably seeing them in in uh, autumn and, and summer but if we uh, just navigate up to a blank layer and we can just put one of these in here and you get an idea of what it is. And this is going to appear like if you have any kind of geometry drawn behind this and if I just gave that a, a solid fill color for example you'll see that provided this object that the tree is in front of the object at the back then you're going to see it. So there are lots of different uh, species and sizes and so on that just can give you a nice quality kind of look to the drawing depending on what uh, what you're after. So definitely worth exploring. Let's go down to the top views and again you can use these to create plants from. If you put one of these in the drawing and it comes in as a 2D symbol 
then if you want to create uh, turn that into a plant and attach species information and stuff put it in the drawing right click on it uh, let me just move this up so you can see the menu right click on it and choose create new plant and when you do that you'll get the normal plant dialog you can get a click the plant data button and, and attach species information you can set the height and spread all of the information and here's the plant graphic here and that's what's going to get used the only thing that isn't going to happen with these plants is that you'll find that under the render tab you can't mass these plants because they, they don't have any geometry to to combine together and uh, you'll find that um, adding an outline is only going to add a kind of bounding box so there's a couple of restrictions on using images like this for plants but apart from those everything else applies the spacing and and the tags and all of that sort of stuff so you can use them for plant images so these are the plan ones and there's a gazillion of those and these I mean these are species but you know I defy anyone to actually recognize this as being um, an Acer whatever that is okay uh, let's go down to the next library and the gray wash shrubs front so you'll see here that this is going to be a bit smaller but again you might have some plants that you just want to put at the back of a model that aren't very significant just to in, in, uh, indicate something so you've got the uh, you've got those ones there also for a top view so yep just a more generic kind of looking plant same applies you can convert this into a plant object if you want to let's have a look at uh, the black and white version so this is the uh, I'll just delete these ones this is the Australian library now and these are well it's a bit bigger these are just black and white versions of the color versions but you know depending on your presentation requirements these might actually just suit perfectly for uh, for the kind of thing that you're looking for because it might just be some kind of uh, 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 representational thing that you want rather than you know a detailed image and don't forget this is a symbol okay if we double click on this and go into the symbol um, actually this is a bitmap that we can't make transparent I was thinking that no oh, no we can't we can't here we go if you click the transparency button here you can actually make it grayscale if you want to so you can you can control that level of, of it if we go back out of the symbol this is now not quite so dominant so you could actually create this in a couple of different um, save the symbol in a couple of different forms and have you know create some kind of distance effect by having the, the ones at the back lighter or darker uh, so that's the uh, the Australian ones in front obviously in a top view they're all here as well so the same thing applies I mean again the species information if we put this in and zoom in I mean what kind of species is that it doesn't really matter that it, that uh, it actually has a name and the same deal applies if you want to just tone that down a little bit because you don't want it quite so black double click and select it so we've gone into edit symbol mode here by double clicking click on the percentage button maybe knock that back to 50 percent set opacity exit out and you've got something that's uh, that you can see through as well as being not so uh, not so uh, dominant in your drawing and of course yes it can be a plant and yes it can be scaled uh, so we've then also got these saved as grayscale as well um, so if we put this one in you'll see it's a slightly different effect where it's just kind of uh, gray and white pixels so but still a really nice looking uh, effect depending on the quality that you're wanting in your drawing and again those ones are there in plan view and top view so oh that's a big one um, so you can see what it is as I zoom in 
Now the the same deal applies to these. If you're going to put 500 of these in your drawing or even 100 of them or you know they're going to increase the size of the file quite a lot um, and I'm going to talk about in a minute how you can reduce the size of these. I mean if if this image here when you bring it into your file is 400k and you're actually going to see it on your drawing at that size there's absolutely no point in having 50 400k images in here when it only needs to be something that's you know 5 or 10k in size so I'll show you at the end of this movie how you can actually save these out as a smaller file we'll just finish going through the the uh, the items here in the library um, so these are the photorealistic ones these are exactly the same as the ones that we've been using in the image props so but these ones are in full color and they're there of course in a top view uh, sorry in a front view and also in a top view I'm not sure if that's quite the same one but um, and again the quality is really good depending on the effect you want in your drawing uh, okay so there they're basically the images that and, and of course there are other ones in the library lots more that that uh, that I haven't showed you but you can see that you know you can use these things and get some really nice effects from them in your drawings now let's look at how you can reduce the resolution of one of these okay so this is the image that we want to reduce uh, the resolution of because we're going to use say a lot of them and we just want to have a small sized image so let's zoom in on this so that it just fits in the drawing window and select it because that makes it easier to spot the bounding box all right now we then go down to export image file and what we want to do is to export and draw a marquee around what we want to export so we choose the marquee option click draw marquee and because we can see the bounding box I know that if I put the cursor here it's going to snap onto that top left corner so I click and then drag down and snap onto the bottom right and click again and the dialog will open again and if I click on wireframe you'll see that it's giving me the exact bounding box of the plant okay now I recommend that you use PNG compression because it's lossless compression which means that even though the file is compressed when it's stored on your computer it doesn't lose any of the file quality unlike a JPEG the next thing to decide is how high is the are you going to print this image at now let's say at 1 to 100 when you think about it the actual image is going to be about 75 millimeters tall when you print it so enter in the size of this the print size of it okay so this when you printed out the drawing that's the size that the plant will measure off if you take a scale rule and measure it off at 1 to 1 on the print set the resolution to 300 which is always uh, the desired resolution for uh, bitmap images and then click save and we'll save this we'll call it test PNG and we'll save that just out to our desktop and now let's import that image into the drawing so we can use it again and we do this so here's our original and that's a 2D symbol so now we'll go to import image file and that's the file there we just exported click open and import it as a PNG and it's about 40k which is ok click ok and there's our image <coughs> now you'll see I can zoom in on this a little bit and that's probably about the print size and printed on a drawing that is going to be fine but obviously if I put this close to this one you'll see that this very quickly becomes pixelated um, 
much more quickly than the detailed image above. But that doesn't matter because we know we're only going to print it at this small size. Now the one other thing that you have to do, you'll see that if I put this over uh, something else, it has a white bounding box. You must set the fill to none. And when you set the fill to none, then the object becomes transparent and you can sit it in front of other objects on your drawing. And so the final thing that you would want to do is to convert this into a symbol, particularly if you're going to use this multiple times in a drawing, but also because then you can add it to a library file and you know you've got some low resolution versions of these things for future use. So to convert it into a symbol, we go to Modify, Create Symbol, and call this, I'm sure you'll come up with a better name than that, um, leave instance in place, insertion point, let's use next mouse click and when I click OK I'm going to click at the bottom of this because I want the insertion point when I insert it on the drawing to be on the ground rather than in the middle of the symbol. So next mouse click, click OK and then come to the bottom here, bottom center and there we are and this means that if we go to the resource browser now, this file is going to be in here somewhere. There it is there, palm. And if I double click this, you'll see that the insertion point of this is now at the bottom. So I can place these here. And this is the most efficient way to to add plants to a drawing, to make it into a symbol because then the drawing is only storing one detail copy plus uh, just the X and Y location of all these other copies. And that's the most efficient way to do it. And of course once you've converted this into a symbol and we've talked about exporting resources to your library files, you can do that with this as well. If you do have a library file where you're storing these things, right click and let's move it up a bit so you can see the menu. Right click and choose export and you'll get the export resource dialog and you can save it into one of your library files. So that's it.